Ladies and gentlemen, Willard Waterman. The Kraft Food Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Pioneer Award is presented to a broadcaster who has given at least 20 years of dedicated service to the radio industry has been a leader in developing or improving quality radio programming. That description characterizes this year's recipient, Norman Corwin. Norman Corwin is a writer, director, producer for CBS Radio. Among his most memorable productions were the historic 1941 documentary, Hailing the Bill of Rights, We Hold These Truths and the 1945 VE Day Patriotic Special on a note of triumph. Norman Corwin is truly a living legend as Charles Corralt of CBS Radio reports. Did you hear about the plot to overthrow Christmas? The plot to overthrow Christmas was Norman Corwin's first original script. He wrote it and directed it and produced it for CBS in 1938. That program made his national reputation. After that, he was given radio's greatest gift, absolute freedom to do what he wanted. In return, Norman Corwin gave radio his greatest gift, outstanding programs, unequaled programs. On December 7th, 1941, Orson Welles spoke Norman Corwin's words on Between Americans. Today, particularly, people are thinking about their country pretty hard. Some of them for the first time in their lives. People are wondering where we're headed. Men are being called on to get ready to defend America. At the end of the war in Europe, on VE Day, Norman Corwin's on a note of triumph was a victory exclamation. So they've given up. They're finally done in, and the rat is dead in an alley back of the Wilhelmstrasse. Take a bow, G.I. Seems like three men have done it again. On the 14th of August, 1945, at the victorious conclusion of World War II, Orson Welles read the nation Norman Corwin's message of joy and sadness. Congratulations for being alive and listening on this night. Millions didn't make it. Fire a cannon to their everlasting memory. God and uranium were on our side. Words by Norman Corwin, writer, producer, director, creator of gold during the golden age of radio. Ladies and gentlemen, the Radio Hall of Fame is proud to induct Mr. Norman Corwin. Accepting for Norman Corwin his Pulitzer Prize winning author and broadcaster, Uds Turkle. Just a brief further word about the singularly gifted man, Corwin. Imagine a night such as this, 48 years ago, May 8th, 1945, VE Day, Democracy Victorious Over Fascism. You listen for the hour to a show called On a Note of Triumph, written, conceived, directed by Norman Corwin, and you are exalted because he was celebrating not just the world as it was, but what it could be. And so, Norman, before reading your letter of acceptance, thank you very much for showing the art of radio as it could be, exalting the human spirit rather than diminishing it and trivializing it. And so your letter of acceptance. I am inconsolably sorry to have sent my thanks to those gathering in Chicago but Studs Churchill will take care of it, hopefully. And he doesn't have the flu. 
Studs and I and many of you lived and worked inside the golden age of radio. We're unaware it was golden. We never suspected that the great networks and their specialties would vanish. For radio was unique in many ways. It was the first theater built for unseen and unseeing audiences, the first to command vast distances, the first to affect masses about mass effects. I live in a region where for sport, a single hand with a lit match can destroy a whole countryside, kill people, reduce to rubble thousands of homes, and shatter lives. But it's another symbol of the reckless cruelty that not only damns the consequences, but enjoys them. The fashions of outrageousness are many. Murderous polarizations at home and abroad. Children gunned down on streets. Political zealots who blow up plain loads of innocence. All those in a seemingly endless pageant of malice toward all and charity for none. What does this do with radio? Much. For radio can still be, as in the past, a moral force. It has the capacity to inform, to arouse and inspire, to exalt, to celebrate, to contribute to the depleted accounts of amity and peace. There do exist scattered islands of quality in radio, but they must be joined to the mainland. Ladies and gentlemen, friends of the Radio Hall of Fame, let's not forget that the very ether that transports our speech and music is not an invention but a gift of the cosmos, a shard of creation itself. With these credentials, plus the needs of a sick world, there's more reason than ever to use the medium conscionably. Again, I thank you.